Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy, and you have entered into The Fix. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Fix. And if there's anything broken people need, we need to be fixed. Some of us, uh, as you know, are are more broken than others. And uh, some of us um, give up ever being whole. And yet we find this thing called recovery. And one day at a time, we work toward being whole and little by little by little just as Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall you know all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again but you and I we one day at a time can become whole and that is the focus of this show so make sure you check me out on recoveryguy.com or .org rather on uh, uh, on the internet and you can go to recoveryguy podcasts on their major podcast channels, YouTube, Real Recovery Guy, and of course, Instagram, Recovery underscore Guy. You know, as I have talked and you have listened, and I'm very grateful for that, uh, you know, with without listeners, uh, I'm just a man on the soapbox uh, standing on the corner looking crazy, you know, but you add some sanity to what I'm doing. And I'm so grateful that you've joined me. You know, one of the things that you know I talk about is alignment. And it's so important, alignment, because without alignment, there's no balance. And with no balance, there is no marker. There's no understanding of where we're going and what we're doing. We're just become this uh, rat or guinea pig on a wheel. And, you know, and, and where Zig Ziglar says we mistake activity for accomplishment. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to be that cartoon character whose legs are moving, but they're not getting anywhere. And so when we come into alignment and we understand how important the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual is, and we understand where we're weak and we need to be strong to gain that balance, um, that is what alignment is. And today, I am so excited to have my friend Vera in studio, and I'll let Vera introduce herself. And, and we're going to talk about the physical aspect and the importance of it is into our life, but not just the recovered life, but anyone listening, we all need to be physically fit because I know that unless a bus hits me, I stand a better chance of living a fulfilled and happy and healthy life if I am fit. My cardiologist will tell me that. My general practitioner will tell me that. My physical therapist, my surgeons I've had over the years, they've said, Robert, staying physically fit is going to not only add years, but those years that you're adding are going to be years that you can enjoy yourself. And I'll tell you, at 68 years old, I find that to be more important than it was when I was 50 because I have to work harder to maintain where I want to be, but I'm so glad I've learned to work hard and smart. And Vera is one of those people who's been instructional to that. So Vera, good afternoon. Let's have a conversation about fitness. Okay, let's have a conversation about fitness. My name is Vera and I am a personal trainer and a fitness coach. And I found my fitness, I reclaimed my fitness, I should say, well, few years ago in 2019, I had a moment in life where I found myself sort of just like most of us just standing in the rubble of what my life had become. And just I was blindsided Mm -hmm. by everything. And I stood in the midst of nothing. And I leaned onto fitness as I usually do. But this time it was different when I did it. Really? Yeah, it was different. I feel like I really put my heart into it. And I just knew because of the nature of what was happening around me that 
I didn't want to plant any seeds of bitterness or contempt or anything like that that was happening in my heart. And I just wanted to be healthy and free. So here I am. <laughs> how, you know, before it gets away from me, how can people reach out to you? Because you and I follow each other on Instagram. Obviously, we see each other yes. because you're, you're an instructor in the same town I live in. But how can people find you on, on Instagram? I know you're looking to grow your presence there and, yes. your, and your outreach there. So how can individuals um, find you along the way? Okay. Well, I am on Instagram. It's my handle is vlp.slc. And you can just go ahead and follow my page. It's, it's a public page. So just go ahead and look for vlp.slc. Click follow. Good. So, so, so on Instagram at VLPSLC. VLP.SLC. Oh, dot SLC. Perfect. Yes. Good. And is there any other social media that you're involved with or right now is it Instagram? Well, primarily I'm on Instagram. I do have a Facebook page, but what I'm going to be doing with that is I'm creating a, a transformation program, which launches in October. And I'm going to use that primarily for just a private Facebook group for those people alone. Okay. I, I, yeah. So basically Instagram is the place to find okay. me initially. And, and then anyone else who's interested in something more direct with you, then they can have that conversation regarding what your Facebook yes. outreach was going to be. Definitely. You know, one of the things I really like about you and your approach um, folks, if you could see Vera's smile in her eyes, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. And when you find <laughs> her on, on Instagram, you'll know what I mean. Um, she's very engaging, very energetic. And she has a glow and a light about her. Um, and a lot of it, I think, is not only because of the physicality that you're involved with, with combat, and we'll talk about that as well. But you mentioned mindset. And, you know, we can take a physical approach but at that mindset, talk about that for a moment and, and how you try to ignite that and make that connection with your students, not just how to, how to press or free weight or machines or whatever, but how to, how to affect the mind and, and, and the, the intricate relationship it has with the physical. Yeah, mindset is very important to me. I find that Throughout my own personal life, as I've been going through various stages of fitness here and there, that my mind sometimes would not follow in line with what my body was doing. And what I mean by that is I would still hold on to old negative beliefs about myself. And, you know, whatever you're thinking up in your mind, that's what's going to color your world. That's what's mm -hmm. going to have you help you to experience life and sometimes if we feel a certain way so you're in there you're working out you're feeling great but then you're still sort of haunted in your mind yeah. of of your past like something that may have occurred in your past or maybe you just feel things like i don't feel like i deserve this or anything like that or i don't think i can do this and your mind is so powerful that we know how strong our mind can be. You can, it can make or break your, your fitness journey if your mindset is sort of just forgotten to be addressed. And I know a lot of fitness plans out there, you, could, you can go out there and you could just go ahead and do it as many TikTok challenges or, or the like, you know, not that anything's wrong with the TikTok challenge because any fitness is good. But if your, if your mindset and your heart, because that connects, they connect to one another, your emotions, sort of, if you don't address that, then it can definitely set you back. Mm -hmm. You know, with mindset and, and also what you're involved with, and I, and I, I, I want to touch on it in just a moment, but I really appreciate 
the term fitness journey, you know, that is so because fitness isn't an event. Fitness is a process. Yes. You know, and, and, and I want to talk about today with you, um, what it's like walking through people, the process and helping identify where they're at, finding out where they want to be in a particular window of time, and then setting that journey up with them so that it makes sense along the way. But one of the things that really enlightened me and helped me understand your passion, you know, as a, as a father of four daughters and, uh, and obviously, Laura and I have been together over 33 years. Women of power, and even I, I probably have three to one listeners, females. And my oh. outreach and my contacts are predominantly women. And, and I, I feel almost an obligation as a father, as a husband, to, to help empower women. I think some ways women are easier to empower because they come with less resistance, mm. but because women have been historically hostages in a way men haven't been, they can be more of a challenge empowering them. But I want to, your passion for empowering women, obviously it's a personal passion, right? Yes, yes, Stemming yes, from yes, your yes. own journey, but let's talk about, because I want the women who are listening today to really navigate and ingratiate you as a woman who has found and is finding further power. Okay. You know, women, as women, it's no s surprise that we tend to put ourselves last or we tend to not speak up in a situation, mm -hmm. you know, like, say how, what we really feel that's true because we're also we tend to be very caring by nature and so you you almost don't want to offend a person you think that well if i tell them the truth i might hurt their feelings you know mm -hmm. and it, it takes time to figure out how to how to do something like that to be able to express yourself in a way where you're honoring yourself and you're you're not being feeling like you're being mean or cruel so i understand that but a lot of times as women we will just we will dim our light and give our power away and wow for whatever reason that may i that may be i i did it i did That's it very and, true yeah and, and you know and it, it's a subtle thing you just don't do it overnight you just Little by little, you allow things in and they take the pieces of that light with them and, and they leave and it leaves. And then you, before you know it, you're standing there and you're looking at yourself and you're thinking, who am I? And it, it almost feels like you're, you're hope, you feel hopeless yeah. sometimes in that moment. But so it is, it is very important to me to empower women because it's one of the most beautiful things to be to feel strong in who you are and just feel like you can take on life better it makes you better all the way around as you go into the world and it's it doesn't mean that you're you it's not cruelty it's you're not you're not being mean or a jerk or anything like that because that kind of empowerment actually is just is beautiful it is and you know one of the things i'm i'm sure that because your physical fitness and and you want to stay within that physical fitness realm although you probably wish you could be a big sister to so many of these women and sit down and, and have a real coffee talk with them. Um, but, but helping a person see that the power they think they have isn't real power because it's left them feeling so vulnerable and weak and introducing them to an internal power 
because I find this in recovery a lot, people in large, but especially women, because again, women historically have been hostages in different ways that men haven't been. And so often I'll, I'll, whether it's Debbie or Wendy or Susie or Lisa or whoever, these other women in my life, you know, outside of my marriage with Laura, you know, even with Laura, I would look at her and say, do you, do you really understand how powerful you really are? And I would ask them that in a challenging way for them to take their own inventory to say, wow, like right now, one of my daughters is really going through a journey and watching her come into her own power <laughs> as a dad, I'm thinking, holy <laughs> crap, where's this, yeah. where's this girl bad, right? <laughs> and she, I'm almost afraid of her. <laughs> but you could just see this power. And one of my daughters is walking through a real life challenge and seeing her grow into this and have this new found. I, I tell you, as a father and as a friend to many of these women, there's nothing more exciting. And I'm sure you who get to see this on a professional level must be that it probably helps your own power. But how, what does that look like? Oh, I love it. I, well, what I love about that is, so I think sometimes when, you know, when, as we're growing up as girls, we are kind of, I wouldn't say that we're pitted against one each other, but I think that there's this I think that's fair. <laughs> I okay. wouldn't think that's unfair. Because I feel like there's like this underlying feeling that like you need, that women need to compete with one another, mm -hmm. you know, that we need to compete. And sometimes, not all the time, you get in these, in these situations where instead of building one another up, you're tearing the other person down, you know? Yes. And I think maybe that just comes like as, as you go through them through some stuff and you learn some things, then maybe that's able to fall away. But when you see, when I see them empowering one another, so, so here's, here's a good example. Um, in tra I'm training and I, when I'm training, I like to introduce people to one another. So if you're in a class, at a certain time and then you and another person comes to a different class and just so happen they may intersect in the gym i will say hey do you know so and so do you know uh -huh. this person and because i just want them to feel that sense of community right well what's really what's really awesome is sometimes they'll really click they'll take one another's numbers down they'll they're like these, this group of three women who started working out outside of the classes. They would text one another. They would encourage each other and they would meet each other at the gym. I thought, no, that's what I love. I love to see <laughs> that, you know, just yes. seeing them just open up to one another and create this beautiful sense of community and connection and start supporting each other. Yes. Yeah, you know, I love that because there's the biblical um, understanding of giving someone a fish and teaching them how to fish so mm -hmm. they can be sustained themselves moving forward, you know. And we talked about it earlier offline. And, and you know, like Laura, an example, she's with me because she wants to be, not because she needs to be. Right. You know? and, and, and I think in the beginning, people will come to you because they really need it. They need fitness. Their cardiologist has told them if you don't get this under control or, or their, you know, their, their physical therapist, or you need this shoulder, you need this work. And by the way, you might as well do this, that, and the other, you know, to, uh, so, so there's a need when they come, but you just listen to you, you, you're best accomplished when you, when you turn that into when they come back because they want to. Yes, definitely. Cause then, then, so then what's happening there, and for me, I see the switch starting to yeah. flip. You know, I see it turning. So now they're putting it together, those pieces, and they're connecting that, those pieces of the puzzle, including their mindset, and they're putting their heart into it mm -hmm. now. And they're starting to step into this position thinking, okay, this is me. Like, I'm, I'm the woman who comes and 
I can lift weights. You know, I'm the woman I come and I can do body combat. Like that's who I am. Like I can, I can do this and they start to own it. And that's the best place to, to be, to see, to see that. Now, when a person comes to you <clears throat> and they, they just have an overall fitness concern, they know they're out of shape, they either they're overweight or, you know, getting upstairs is difficult, whatever the reason is, maybe the females just had a baby and she wants, so there's a myriad of reasons why people would come to you in your gym. So if there's a, a generic composite of a person coming to you who's not in shape, but they, they want to become in shape. Where do you start? What do you do? Because a lot of, a lot of the, of our listeners, they're wondering, how do I get in shape? Because I know it's not overnight. It is a process, not an event. So how do I move from where I'm at to where I think I want to be? That's a good question. And how important so, is a coach? Well, I think, you know, initially a coach could definitely be of a benefit for a person who just doesn't know what to do, where to start or feel overwhelmed. There's so much information out there that it can, you can become inundated with all this info thinking, okay, so what, what, what should I, what should I be eating? What workout should I be doing? What about my shoes? Like what kind of shoes should I be wearing? Should I be wow. wearing some, something special? Like, you know, I feel like there's so much info there's, but it can become overwhelming for a person who may be already feeling overwhelmed about their, their situation, whatever their situation may be. So I like to just strip it down right to the basics every single time. I like to meet them on their level. We just talk it out. That's, I need to stop you there because I, I don't want to miss that. When you said on their level, they're not going to be on your level, right? Not right away. They're on their level. And, and I think to help them feel better about who they are, they have to know that they're, they're not, there's no expectation of being you right away. I mean, you became you over, over years of, of working and diligence yes. and commitment and that light going on. So Touch on that just for a moment, because I think that's so important in terms of the person having a reasonable expectation of themselves and what they can accomplish initially. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely like to see where they're at, and I do like to meet them where they're at, like where they are, because everyone is going to start from a different place. And I like to help them to understand that where they're starting is okay. And it's also, it's just your foundation. So mm -hmm. I like to think of it and put it to them as this is your foundation. And let's start right where you are and just build that one, that first layer and make it strong. And then as that layer is stronger then we put another layer on and then we put another layer on and before you know it you're you're who knows like you're doing burpees and tuck jumps right yeah but you have to start at a level that is manageable for you something that is realistic so it's i feel like it's very important to take an assessment of where you are and be honest with yourself and thinking okay well this is the this is where I am in my fitness journey. This is where I am. This is the condition of my health right now. And I want to get here, but it's going to take some steps. So that's important to me to be able to sort of help them to understand that even the small steps in are going to count because that's better than taking no action. Yeah. And, and, and no action, obviously we know what the results are, 
but and taking action too quick can be just as adverse because that can burn you out. You can strain a muscle. Yeah. Um, you know, as you were talking about the process of building layers, I thought of an architect. Now, I don't know anything about architect, but I know George <laughs> Costanza on Seinfeld always wanted to be an architect. Um, yeah. and, 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 and I was thinking of building a building and how important it is you, you set the cornerstones and then you get them inspected. Yes. And the, the inspector already knows how many stories, two, three, four, they, they know how high you want to go. And then they inspect those cornerstones and they say, okay, now you can build the first floor and you get that first floor built. And the inspector comes back and says, now we can add the another and then the other, and then the other, but building the next floor is really contingent on the foundation that that floor is going to rest on. Is, is that the same? Or is that a yes. stretch? No, that's exactly how I think about it, too. I like that you mentioned Seinfeld. I think that he, he, his name was Art Vandelay. Yeah, Vandelay. Yeah, yeah. yeah Vandelay. Uh, yes, yes. Vandelay Industries. Vandelay Industries, yes. <laughs> so, but that's how I think about it, Robert. I think about the foundations of a structure. Because yeah. that there's nothing worse than building your structure on a a foundation that's not sturdy it just won't hold right yeah. so that's what i'm that's exactly what i'm talking about so you start at that base level whatever everyone's base level is different you start at that base level and then you you just bring in the other elements as those elements get stronger and you just keep working together to get to a point where they don't need you. Yeah. They're out yeah. there and they got all the tools now, which is which is what I would like to see for each client, each person that I help. I'd like to give them the tools and I like to see them we still create that foundation and then they build that house. <laughs> Just no, you know what? That's it. really that's really true. And you make a periodic trip. I know for me, when I first started at Planet Fitness, I don't know, seven years ago and really made a direction of becoming more fit. I went in and spent some time with the coach and this machine, that machine, this is what I want to do. And, and I even, I think it was probably, I don't know, six or seven months ago, I came into you and there was a particular body part that I was concerned with. And there was a machine that I was using that was causing one of my shoulders to be uncomfortable. And I said, okay, this is the pain I'm getting. I want to accomplish this. So what machines and you, and you said, okay, I need you to do this and do that and you should be fine. And I've been doing that and it's really made an improvement. So even oh, people you catch it. along the way who maybe understand a little bit about fitness, yeah. right. Um, and they come in and they say, okay, I want to go to this next level. So you don't need to be uh, the lack of a better term, babysat or handheld by a coach all the time. Right. Sometimes it's just enough to get you started and then you periodically check back in and mm -hmm. you get, I'm ready to go to the next level. What do I do now? Do you get a lot of people <laughs> like that? Yeah, actually I do. I'll have people who uh, like, for instance, I'm just thinking of this one guy who he would come in and he wanted to be able to run faster because he was trying to qualify uh -huh. for a track for a track team. Right. So really? he is wanted to run faster so i watched him his gates you know and tried to figure out why he was um getting knee pains and then we kind of uh had determined that he had like a tight uh this tight psoas muscle and we sort of like i gave him a protocol to sort of help stretch with that and then helped him with his running gait and the last time I saw him at the gym a couple months ago, I saw him running on that treadmill and he was like killing it. <laughs> yeah, that's but, great. Yeah. And so I, he I was just, already athletically yes, directioned. Definitely. He was already athletic. He just wanted to improve where he was at. And that's the thing, like you, anybody can improve wherever they're at. So everyone's baseline is going to be totally different, but you can always get better. And you're right. You don't need to necessarily have a coach with you every day every step of the way 
But initially, you might need one more often than right. someone else. But yeah. then eventually that's going to fall away and you'll be able to handle, handle it yourself. You know, there's nothing worse than feeling bad about yourself to the degree that if you feel like you ask a question, you'll look more stupid. Oh, so yeah. I'll set that up because I would imagine a lot of times new people will come into your gym and they know they need help, but if they ask for help, does that make sense? Yeah. How, how do you come alongside a person to get them to sort of open up about where they're at and, and express a need? Because a lot of times people... Uh, equate ignorance with stupidity yeah. and I'm ignorance about a lot of areas in physical fitness but I'm not a stupid person right. I'm very smart and there's nothing wrong with being ignorant it just means you don't know you've never been exposed to it it's not my area of expertise but thank goodness there's people like you how do you break that down to get people to really open up with you so you can because it's like when I go to the doctor Unless I tell Dr. Jones the absolute truth about how I'm feeling, how I'm hurting, what I'm feeling at different times, Dr. Jones can't diagnose me, therefore can't give me a, a reasonable prognosis or even a diagnosis to help me along the way. Does that make sense? So in a way, yes. you're like, like a fitness doctor, but it, it that person needs to be honest with you, Yes. but them trusting you and liking you is going to determine their honesty. Does that make sense? That, that makes total sense. That's a really good question. And it makes complete sense because sometimes you're going to uh, talk to someone and the information they're going to share is going to be very sensitive. Yeah. And you can see their, their heart on their sleeve. You can see the rawness of what yeah. they're telling you. That's true. Because I know you... And I'm a very social person anyway. And so I know you to be so kind and gracious, but I don't walk in that fear. I would imagine that when people come in and they are afraid and they are intimidated and they are scared and they are defeated even before they start, you know, you like a doctor has a bedside, a bedside yes. manner. Yes. You have a bedside manner as well, don't you? That's very true. Yeah. You know, I've never actually thought about it like that. But I do. And when people come in to see me and they sit in that chair. So one one thing I did was I kind of took the chair used to be across my desk. And I, I didn't like yeah. the desk being between us. So I put the chairs on the side so we could kind of face one another. And some of the people I train were jokingly call it calling it the talk show. Right. They said, <laughs> this looks like a talk show. <laughs> but I find that if I can just sit we can be close to one another yeah. facing each other like like just two people talking you know yeah. nothing formal with this gigantic desk so that's one thing like right between us and and it seems so structured and but right. like like you're in a job interview or something yeah but if we're sitting so next to each other side by side we're where we can talk and then i like to just let them talk so i try to ask them questions that will make them feel comfortable initially i'll ask them why they're there that's like i that's the first question i usually ask anybody who has made an appointment who for whatever reason wherever they're coming from i would just say to what well, why are you here today like yeah. what what made you come and see me why and then Sometimes that will be enough to have them just open up and I'll just listen. And I'll just, I'll let them talk. You know, I'll just let them say whatever they need to say. Um, and then we go from there. So yeah. sometimes you it's, got it's, emotional about that. I did. You, did. I did. you can't see did. her folks. Cause yeah. I can, we're on zoom right now. So I can see her. <laughs> You'll just hear, her. but I watched her facial expression go to yeah. very empathetic. So this is really personal to you, isn't it, Vera? It is. It is, it is very personal for me because like I said, uh, 
I have been through the ups and downs with my own fitness journey and um, in life, like most of us, you know, and I just know that there's people out there and they're looking at themselves in the mirror or they're, or they're looking at their life and they're thinking that there's, there's no way. There's no way I can fix any of this. But I really believe they can. I know because of what I fix for myself, you know, what I'm still continuing to work on within myself. But Robert, if you saw me 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, I am a totally different person. I was a totally different woman back then. I think that it affects me because I really want them to get that re- those results. Like mm-hmm. I really want them to feel empowered in yeah. not just their physical fitness, but in their life. Yeah. I want them to be able to reclaim that and stand strong and feel that courage. Because when you feel that empowerment and you feel courage, no matter what happens, no matter what comes at you, uh, the storms like of life starts to churn and they will always churn, then you're going to feel that you can handle it. You know, that you can, you can take it and you what will come, come what may, you're going to be okay. You know, so in listening to you, it's very holistic because in listening to you share you went from the physical to empowerment, which touches the spiritual, the emotional, and the mindset, that mental aspect. So, so your introduction to a person may start out physical. Yes. As your relationship grows, whether they know it or not, you're touching all of the dimensions the domains that allow them to live in alignment even though they may not know it oh yeah i you know i hope so i hope so because that's definitely no that comes through oh that that comes through that's not i i if, if i didn't know you and i heard a person say that i would make that mind body spirit emotion connection it, it means a lot to me, definitely, to get that holistic approach to fitness. And I feel that that's how you can obtain your health. Mm-hmm. And you can be healthier than you've ever been. Yeah. And then you can be that way until the end of your days. Yeah. You can be continue from that point forward. You're just going to thrive in this, in this, in this like state of well-being that you you never even knew yeah. was possible. You know, I I would imagine as you get people that you've worked with over the years, and and you see them a year or two or three years down the road, and and we talked about it earlier, they've transformed into a person that if you didn't know them, they would be unrecognizable. Right. Because not only their body shape and their health has been affected. So visually they look different, but they sound different. They carry themselves with a sense of confidence. And, and like, I love that word empowerment, which is a whole nother level of, of attractiveness, not from good looking because that's a relative term, but, but power attracts power. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and, and I would imagine that that is what drives you, you know, and taking it from a, from a, from what you do for a living and what you live for. Yes, it does. It does. I feel like that is definitely what drives me as a, as a trainer. And it drives me as a coach and instructor is that sense of standing in, not just in my own empowerment, but being able to help other people find that place for themselves. And it is a wonderful 
place to be when you see, when you witness that. Yeah. Well, we need to have this conversation come to an end. Um, <laughs> I've had the greatest time in Me putting too. this together with you and <laughs> There's so many interesting parts and, and I'll, and I'll have you back again and we'll talk about other things that you're doing and, and the growth of your Facebook and your coaching and the other things you're doing with combat and, and so on. But I really thank you for your time today. I'm so grateful. Oh, thank you. And, and I hope we, I hope we touched on the things that we had discussed touching on. I know that I have a tendency to love to chase rabbits. Um, <laughs> But there was, there's, there's so many different places we can go because, you know, a person who was broken in so many ways as I was, and then becoming broken again in the area of physical fitness and health and reclaiming that 12 years ago. And, and in many ways started my journey over, even though I never drank or used, I had to make that connection between the physical or reconnect and how important that was to the other uh, dimensions of my life and, and, uh, and what you do for people um, is, is invaluable. It's something that, that, that I can't, I'm not capable of doing. It's not my expertise, but thank goodness the Lord has directed me to people like you who add such a great dimension to my life. Oh, thank, thank you for saying that. I, I yeah. appreciate that because I love the position I'm in. Yeah, I can tell. I wouldn't change anything for the world as far as standing here, feeling this way and doing what I do. So I appreciate you saying that yeah. a lot because I it's really my put my heart into it. <laughs> and well, I would definitely love to have another chat. No, we will. We will. In the meantime, <laughs> remind us again how we can get back with back to you and follow you on Instagram. Oh, and sure. can people message you as well if they've got a personal question they don't want to? Oh, so, definitely. And, and you'll get back to them the same day because a lot of yeah. times we we we're not confident in ourselves enough to ask the question openly, but it's a question that needs to be asked. Oh yeah, and, totally. and I, I want to make sure understand. that they can message you with that. If 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 anyone out there has that question, that uh, you may be embarrassed to to ask openly. I you know I understand that. So you can reach me at on Instagram at vlp dot slc, and if you message me, I will message you back. Amen. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, the time today. And, and folks, as you know, fitness is so important to me as a person of recovery. You know, one of the things that I like to do in Instagram is I want you to see me not as a person because you can't see me as a person who doesn't drink and use, but you can see me as a person who is fit. Physical fitness is a tangible thing. And I think we need to achieve that and make that a part of our recovery, uh, whether we want to or not, because it's attraction rather than promotion. And, and there's the adage that if newcomers could see no joy in our existence, they wouldn't want it. And so much of my joy comes from being able to mow my lawn or go to the gym or stay up late, or get up early, or work long periods of time and do many chores. That is where so much of my joy is centered, and that comes from being physically fit, and it's people like Vera who have helped me along that journey. So thank you so much for listening. As always, my name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy. You know how to get in touch with me, and as I always say, we got broken apart, but we get whole together. Have a great day, and be blessed. 